Hello and welcome to Ellen and Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am not making soap, I'm making bath bombs today. And I'm so excited to make bath bombs with this new little um, mold that I got. It's a press and it makes a donut. I'm so excited. I got this on Etsy um, and I will put the link below where I got it from. Um, I also have a round bath bomb mold from them and a tablet shaped one. Um, so today is my first time using my donut. I'm so excited to use this. Um, and for the fragrance, I have a Cinnabon from Crafter's Choice, which is Wholesale Supply Plus. This smells amazing. So, um, and it does not behave well in soap. So I was trying to think of what I could use this fragrance for and bath bombs are where we're going with it. Um, I, I do have the recipe that I'm using today, the description box below. I'll have it written out, but I'll just tell you what I've got going on here. I kind of, it's a mess and my hands get messy when I'm me measuring everything. So I'll tell you what I have so far. Um, I have my citric acid here, citric, uh, 16 ounces of citric acid. In this big container, I have 32 ounces of baking soda, 16 ounces of Epsom salt, and 16 ounces of GMO free, non-GMO, uh, corn starch and then my, my um, citric acid and then also in this big one and the reason I have it measured separate I'll tell you in a minute um, I have six tablespoons of kale and clay and two tablespoons of organic colloidal oats are in here and I'm also going to be adding because this has a little bit of a toasty color this aloe leaf powder in here and that's just going to add a really just a nice soothing element to these bath bombs because I'm not going to add any micas in here. Um, I thought between the colloidal oats and the aloe vera powder we will get a nice little toasty color on this and uh, when it comes time to frost these I might put a little color in that. So I'm going to do about a tablespoon of the aloe powder in there because I don't want to mess with the dry ingredients too much because it'll throw the consistency off. So I have the citric acid off to the side here because when I add my liquid portion, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, I don't want to activate my citric acid and get it fizzing, so I'm going to put that in last. So for my liquid portion, what I've got going in here is I've melted four tablespoons of coconut oil, four tablespoons of shea butter, two tablespoons of cocoa butter, um, six pumps, which is about, I have a, of Castile soap. I'll link below just a good, clean, pure Castile, no um, additives. You can get a lavender scent if you want, but just a, a soft soap. So I did six pumps, which is about maybe two tablespoons. Um, four tablespoons of polysorbate 80 is in here. And then I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of witch hazel and four tablespoons of my fragrance oil which is what I ran through the calculator for this. You, you need to look up each, if you're gonna use essential oils or fragrant oils, run it through a calculator for bath bombs, make sure it's skin safe, um, and take care of that on your own, because it's different for each one. They're not all the same. Fragrances and essential oils, they're all different, so make sure you run them through a bath um, skin safe calculator. So that's what's going on in here. Um, I still need to add my witch hazel and fragrance to this, but I've melted down the oils uh, let's see. So, I've got this empty container and now I'm going to simply be running everything through this sieve because I want it all very um, powdery and fluffy and plumpy and all that. So, we're just going to scoop it out and work it through the sieve. Baking soda can get clumpy, Epsom salt can get clumpy, and uh, we just want it all sifted out really smooth. So I do add the witch hazel into the liquid portion and then I also have this little spritzer bottle with witch hazel in it that you can just add a little spritz at a time for moisture in your bath bombs because they're very touchy um, how much moisture you add to them and a lot of factors depend on this. It's winter time right now while I'm making this bath bomb. If it was summer and the humidity was high. Um, you may need less or more depending on the weather and the temperature and the room you're in and the humidity level. All those things factor into a bath bomb and its consistency. They can be real touchy. So I, a lot of people will say, oh, I have a foolproof recipe. Well, it may be foolproof in their region, their area, and their temperatures, but that doesn't mean it's foolproof nationwide, globally. <laughs> so 
the Epsom salt doesn't go through this fine mist. So let's pour in some more here and work it through. So anyway, that being said with um, bath bombs, they're fun, they're easy, you're not dealing with lye or you know caustic chemicals, but they can be a little touchy. You can get cracks, you can get them you know, coming apart. Boy, that's poofing all over. So just know that there isn't like one size fits all for bath bombs. Um, it'll change with the seasons, it'll change with your region and humidity and all that. So I'm just gonna keep sifting this and we'll come back when it's time to uh, get our liquids incorporated. All right, I've got all of my dry ingredients except for my citric acid sifted really well. Um, and I'm just going through here with my hands, making sure there's no clumps. So when it's time to add this, it'll be nice and smooth. A little liquid portion here. Got our oils. And so I just have this witch hazel here that I'm gonna add two tablespoons right in here. fragrance oil All right. add this in and I'll start mixing and once this is dispersed throughout my powders um, I will go ahead and add the citric acid and it won't activate the, um, the fizziness of it so just literally pour it in there and then you start mixing. And I may need to get my hands down in there and kind of mash it around and that's why I've got my gloves on. Keep everything nice and clean. Um, all right. Just gonna blend and get this going. So because of the liquid Castile soap in here, uh, Castle Soap Castile, how do you say it? Um, it has a little bit of a foaming action and I like it a lot because that combined with the polysorbate 80, all the cocoa butter and shea butter uh, and coconut oil in here, it won't leave a ring on your tub and it won't have like that slippery greasy feel. It's just very soft and moisturizing. And it gives it a little bit of bubbles, which I like. I think that's really fun. So I just think it makes for overall a really, really nice feel in the entire bathtub. Okay. All right, now what I do is I just kind of rub with my hands, make sure I get any, um, you can see some little clumps and I just want to really break those up. And now it's dispersed enough where I'm gonna go ahead and just dump in my citric acid now and get that all blended in. And after I'm convinced that I have this as blended as I can get it, then I will start squeezing and seeing if it's um, how the moisture level is and if I need to spritz any witch hazel on here to wet it down um, and make it moldable. That's one of those, you know, somebody says it needs to feel like wet sand. Well, wet sand feels different to everybody. <laughs> There's different levels of wet sand, so it's really a squeeze factor, you know, where you take a clump and you hold it and you see that's breaking apart, so it's not, it's not going to hold together in the mold right now but I still need to work at it. Don't have this blended all the way. And this is just a little time consuming. I'm just chatting while I do this. I mean, this is probably not the best bucket. I have a really wide mouth stainless steel bowl. It might be a little easier to blend with. In fact, when I do my next batch, I'll probably go get that because having a tall sided bucket just makes it a little challenging to blend. <laughs> All right, so here is our little donut mold. It's just a 
a coupler ring, and then the two little donut halves. So you put one down in here. I have it on paper because there's a hole, and so the extra um, powder and stuff will come through and we'll just shake it back in. So you want to kind of mold it up just a little and don't pack it down. Let the little mold do all the packing for you. Get it fitted and press. And then turn it over and press down. And I like to use my whole body weight and I am not a light person so it's a lot. Now that has, however much you put in there, you'll have the little ring on it, so I may do less. There's your donut. And then for the hole, I just poke. And there we go. There's one little donut. I'm going to set it over here on my um, bubble wrap. And we just keep making. And then when I get a, you know, a bunch of crumbles on here, I dump them back in. So put it down. Got a nice loose handful. And press. It's pretty low tech. I've seen people with those amazing bath bomb machines with the hydraulics, which is awesome, but I cannot afford one of those. So, I do them by hand. I'm going to just take off the extras on the outside here. And let me get a chopstick. There we go. That'll help my hole go a little easier. Just want to poke out the hole. And there's my donut. Right, so I'm done pressing all my donuts. I'm gonna let them sit overnight and dry out before we come back in and do a little drizzle frosting. But I have a little powder left over. So I'm gonna put it in this water here and we can see how it fizzes. There we go. It's creamy and fizzy and it is so soft. It is just a wonderful fizzy bubbly bath. All right, so it's been 24 hours since I made these little donuts and they're nice and hard. And so I'm ready to go ahead and frost these with a drizzle. And so what I'm gonna use for my drizzle is I have five ounces of cocoa butter here. And I think that'll be enough. If I need to make more, I can, super simple. So five ounces of cocoa butter that I'm gonna melt down. Uh, and then I'm going to add four ounces of baking soda and I'll play with the last ounce. It can be a 50-50. I'm looking for a nice kind of um, drizzly consistency. I'm gonna put just a touch of my fragrance in there, and then I might, oh, here, for the coloring, I have this French white shimmer. I'm gonna put just a little of that in there because I want it to sort of look like a sugar glaze. Well, my cocoa butter is melting. I'm gonna show you I made these little peaches and cream. This is the puck size mold um, that just is different than the donut. Uh, and I like these because they're easy to wrap and ship. So um, this is peaches and cream, and it's the same basic recipe, but I added some coconut milk powder in there and obviously a different fragrance, and I did add a, just a touch of Lip Safe Hammered Copper Mica for a colorant, and I'm gonna be doing a mica and rubbing alcohol um, drizzle on top of these, so we'll come back and do that. But I just wanted to show you, I made a bunch of these yesterday. They smell great, same basic recipe, so you can tweak it and kind of make it your own. That's my cocoa butter. I'm gonna go check on it and see if it's melted. All right, my cocoa butter's all melted. I've added just a touch of fragrance, and now I'm gonna add just a little bit of this 
mica in here before I add my um, baking soda because I want it to blend in really good. And I'm hoping this will just lighten it and give it a little shimmer shine. It's very pretty. Look at that. It's beautiful. All right, let me pull my scale over here and tear it out. And add some baking soda. I'm going to go with four ounces to start, and then uh, we'll play around with it after that if we need to. So, four ounces in there. And if this gets too firm as I'm working, you just pop it back in the microwave and remelt that cocoa butter. It's a very uncomplicated process. So that's looking pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to add any more. I don't want it all to run off though. So, well, I've got some lumps in there, but see how it's just a nice drizzle. And I'm back to do these with a mica drizzle and so you just take rubbing alcohol and the mica color of your choice in this case it's brambleberries apple moss green and uh, you add a little mica to the rubbing alcohol and what it does is it makes the mica stick and then the alcohol evaporates off 